The Minnesota Golden Gophers bringing back a lot on offense this year. A team that got pretty good offensively by the end of last season and the defense improved after a defensive coordinator change toward the end of the year. Among the talented players back, Tyler Johnson, big play wide receiver, Carter Coughlin, on all kinds of All-America lists heading into this year and, of course, loaded particularly at that running back spot. P.J. Fleck, the head coach of the Gophers, joining us now. Uh, coach, year three for you uh, atop this Minnesota program. Where do you feel like you are in the development of being the program you want to be? Well, I think we're right exactly where we should be. I think last year we had the youngest team in America, and uh, we had to grow up. We had to mature very quickly. The team failed enough at the beginning of the year to become successful at the end. And I thought they matured. They grew up. We turned a corner at the Wisconsin game, uh, finding a way to win at Camp Randall since the first time since 1994. And with the amount of freshmen that were on that field, that was a little bit surprising probably to a lot of people. Um, but we are exactly where we should be. Our best players are now our hardest workers, and they're setting the tone for a lot of those underclassmen, which we have close to 80% underclassmen right now. But when you have a youthful team plus experience, that's a good combination to have. You mentioned ending that drought against Wisconsin. I know you talked about it earlier, too. What did that mean to your program? Well, I think it was just great for the rivalry. You know, anytime a team dominates 15 straight years or close to 15 straight years, there's a lot of people on the other side of the losing side that sits there, sit there and say, we'll never, or I hope we will one day, or we can't. Uh, I think that's good for both teams that now Minnesota has won. I think it's rekindled that rivalry, especially the way we did it. And uh, with all due respect, it looked a little bit like Wisconsin football, uh, the way we were able to do it, which was uh, all the credit to them. So, um, you know, we've got a long way to go, but it was a, a I th feel like a turning point with our players' belief. Everybody needs a little bit of, uh, uh, they need something in front of them. They can't just believe in the faith. They need that proof. And I think that was a proof for some of our fan base. So as you were finishing so strong last year, we, what, why were you doing it? Were you, what, what was going on in the staff room? Why was it so successful? What was happening we that was staying, different? We were staying consistent. You know, we, I'm a very positive guy by nature. And uh, when you explain to people at the beginning of the year, this could be a very rough year, right? And you, you've been through a year two, right, where you have so many young players playing. But you also know that they will mature. They will grow up at some point. They'll fail enough to be successful. They'll mix it in with a little success so they know the taste of it. And then somewhere in between, they'll figure it out. And our guys figured it out at some point. Our staff stayed incredibly positive. We focused on that one week and that one game only, no matter what happened. And uh, then they finally were able to turn the corner and make some plays that were really important. You talk about the staff believing. You talk about the players believing. How difficult was it for you to make a change in the season and stay positive as well? That's really hard. I mean, Coach, you know when you got to make a change, a very difficult thing to do, but it was necessary. And uh, we didn't necessarily change our defense, but we changed the leadership in our defense. Joe Rossi is one of the best teachers, one of the best educators I've ever been a part of. Uh, he can really get people to do things that maybe haven't heard it the first time, do it the first time. And I think that really helped with the young group. We made it a lot simpler, and they were able to play a lot faster. Coach, transfer portal, good thing or bad thing for college football and why? It's a mix. I think it's really good to have college athletes, student athletes have options to go certain places, but I think we've got to make sure we don't go down the slope of being able to recruit off other people's teams. Uh, we, got to make, we cannot make this free agency. If the issue is to be able to get somebody back home because of a family issue or a critical issue back home, you can solve that issue by still sitting out a year. You can solve the issue at hand, but there's still got to be a, some type of playing penalty where you sit there and look at, okay, well, I'm not just going to snag these people off the team that can play right away and have an open free agent market. So uh, I think the NCAA is moving in the right direction with it. I think it's really healthy for college football, for student athletes to be able to move if they need to be able to do that. Uh, but also, we've got to continue to keep that competitive spirit of young people. We're teaching them life lessons. If you don't have the job, go find a way to get the job. Compete. Stay. Wait your turn. Find a way to get that job to become yours because, you know, you're in football, you're only one play away from having it be yours anyway. So you're still in favor of sitting out a year. You wouldn't. I'm still in favor of sitting out a year because when everybody talks about the certain issues of why people go and why they want to leave, uh, most of it has to deal with whatever they're submitting has to do with personal issues, family issues. We can still solve those issues but still have the football be able to have maybe a, a redshirt year or a sit-out year. What does your quarterback position need to do for you this year 
to be a consistent winner each and every week? You hit it right on the head, be consistent. You know, uh, year one when you're playing freshman, I did it at Western Michigan, and the completion percentage isn't all that great, right? We need the completion percentage to go up. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily need just Joe Montana back there making all the plays. We just need somebody to run our offense at a very high level. And I thought both young people, Zach and Tanner, did a great job of showing they could do that at times. They just have to do it more over the course of time as they continue to get more consistent. So when do you make that decision? Who's your starter? Uh, Coach, I want to make that decision as fast as I possibly can. Uh, do you set a date so you f it forces you to do that? If they haven't won the job yet, it's hard to do that because they both have played. They both have um, some type of loot with us. They know exact we, we know exactly what they can do, but I want somebody to separate themselves. I want somebody to make it clear for me because if not, then you're always going back and forth, and that's not the recipe that we want to have. You know, last time you made a decision when we were on campus. I'm just saying, we broke news that day. <laughs> and the season went pretty well. And, and you want a bowl yeah, game? I like yeah, it. Yeah. We might have to do that. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> He's always reaching. No, I Would don't. you just stop? Well, okay. Just I'll, stop. I'll stop. In some, in some quarterback battles, some coaches sometimes will say, well, the team kind of makes that decision as well. The team, when who they're responding to, is that part of the process with you? It is. Uh, I want somebody who's going to be able to lead the entire team and that the team respects. The issue we have is I think the whole team respects both guys. Not only that, I think they're also respecting how hard those two young players are working, you know, Jacob Clark and, and Cole Kramer from mm -hmm. Eden Prairie, Minnesota. So we've got two guys. We had one quarterback on scholarship last year, guys. Now we have four. And uh, it's kind of a good problem to have, and we'll continue to add to that as we continue to go forward in recruiting as well. Give us a little scouting report on Fresno State because we know very little about them. You know, uh, they're a dangerous football team. We played them last year. We're lucky to get out with the win. Antoine Winfield Jr. makes a huge play in the end zone at the end of the game, and uh, that's one of those plays say, thank gosh he's out there. <laughs> you know, that had nothing to do right. with coaching because uh, he was up on a play where he shouldn't have been. He find a way to make a play. But Fresno State's a very talented team. You know, our three non-conference games, they have, they, they've all won 10-plus games last year. 32-8 and eight is the record. Wow. It's a very dangerous non-conference schedule, and uh, – you know, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. Very, very good football team. Uh, there you see the game starting with South Dakota State on FS1 and we'll have the Georgia Southern game as well here on BTN. Uh, Coach, we were talking a little bit about the quarterback spot. You bring back so much at the skill positions. I mean, you are really loaded there. We highlighted Tyler Johnson, but he's one of just several very talented wide receivers. You have four different backs who went over 100 yards in a game last year. How does that change, having all that skill position talent? How does it change or impact what you can do? We're finally getting depth, and it's competitive depth. Last year, I think we just did everything we could to fill some gaps and get some numbers and play a lot of young players the best we possibly could. But now we're finally having that depth that we need. You know, Coach Mason always used to say, you need a pair and a spare, right? Well, running back, we got a pair of spare and another pair and a spare. And I'm not complaining. <laughs> In the Big Ten, one thing I've learned is you better have a stable of running backs. Yes. One thing we've... I guess we sold to our running backs, right? Because you got to keep them all really happy is you're all going to be healthy. And I think everybody wants to play feeling pretty good. When, when they get their turn, they're going to be healthy, fresh, and they're going to have an opportunity to do things. Uh, maybe a worn down team is going to struggle with some of our backs. But Rodney Smith, he's done a lot of work at the wide receiver position as well. Worked on his routes the last two years. But there's two guys a lot of people don't even talk about, Cam Wiley um, and Trey Potts, that nobody even knows about yet that we just got on campus that are phenomenal players. So with Bryce and Mo and Rodney and Shannon and those two guys, uh, we have some depth at that position where last year we didn't have any, and we're kind of wondering who is actually going to fill the gap. And then you also have to be able to find them if you're trying to defend this team because the offensive line is so big. <laughs> well, one guy's as big as everybody. Well, he, <laughs> he covers up all five of them. Is that goal line attacks going to be used to... We'll see. That was spring game. <laughs> well, spring game. It's a lot easier to call that in spring <laughs> because everybody laughs. Everybody says that's a great play. You do it in the fall. Everybody's like, why did he do that? Look what happened to that guy. It's not spring. I'm watching and saying, is he doing it? To make people defend it, or is he doing it so he won't ever do it in the game? Or is he so you got? No, I got to. I don't know who's going to get in front of Daniel yeah. at all. Anyway, who wants to tackle him? I tell you what, he's what's a he large tipping man. the scales at right now? Oh, he's at a slim. 398, 399. Really? He's under four he's bills. Under four he's bills. under four bills. <laughs> <laughs> got to give him a lot of credit. You know, he's kind of like the bearded lady. Everybody's got to see him to believe him, <laughs> right? You should charge admission for people to walk by and actually see who he is. But he's he's such a great person, and he's got a huge heart, and he's got this giving spirit to him. And sometimes that gets lost behind how big of a guy he is because yeah. that's all people talk about. But, 
he'll be on that right side, and, and uh, he'll be right at 400 when the season starts, and then we'll see where he goes from there. Coach, you need the big heart to get the blood going through all the veins. <laughs> he got, he's got a 30-inch vertical. Yeah. Think about that for a second. For that big of a guy, I mean, he is a true athlete as well. So, um, you know, GQ Magazine named him one of the top 50 Australian athletes. Yeah. And that's of all time. And he's he's only been playing football two years, guys. So who know. knows he, where he's going? That's because he was an unbelievable rugby player. Unbelievable rugby player, yes. At that size. Do you have a subscription to GQ, or you just heard that? Uh, from your... Possibly. <laughs> I, I Is that the Australian GQ? I mean, because that would seem like to be a niche article in the American GQ. It probably was. <laughs> top, yeah, probably top 50 was. Australian athletes of all time. I don't think you put that, like, on, on the a, newsstand. A lot of cricket. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Coach, how's, how's this new facility been working out? Uh, you had time of what a year now that you've been in been up and functional it's, it's program changing it, it was in the works way before i got there i just get the benefit from all the generous people who were able to donate towards it but when our players walk into the facility they feel like minnesota is a national champion type program they feel it's important and i'm not just talking the football part academics when you walk into our academics are it's world class there's there, Jackie Lenish and her staff do an elite job in our academics. There's a reason why our GPA is 3.20 across the board as a football program. We have guys going from 2.4 to 3.7. It's not just because we emphasize it. It's because when they walk in that building, it is a world-class life program building, and it feels right. And it connects all of our student athletes. I think Mark Coyle hit a home run of being able to get everybody in there, eat together, all of our 755 student athletes to connect it as a big team. The West feels really wide open, and I think this is going to be a theme throughout these next couple of days and probably throughout this year. So what does it take for Minnesota to win it? Well, we have got to play consistent football. Last year, we talked about the 78%. You know, when you win the turnover battle, you win the explosive play battle, and you win the missed tackle battle, you're going to win 78% of the time. When we won those three statistics in a game, we were 7-0. and When we lost, we were 0-6. And as a coach, when you bring out a statistic like that, you just cross your fingers and hope it works. And it came back 100%. We have to be more consistent. We have to have our senior leadership drive this football team. And we need our young players to play not like freshmen. They need to play like upperclassmen. And last year, they got their feet wet. A lot of our freshmen set for a lot of freshman records. But now we got to be more consistent, come together as a football team, and see what we can do in this wild, wild west. <laughs> it is wild. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've mentioned it a few times. I'm more than half of the roster last year, freshmen in red shirt freshman and I know a lot of anticipation to see what this team right. one year older one year more experience will do in the Twin Cities PJ Fleck really appreciate it yeah thanks for having us join you row the boat Sky Ma go Gophers thanks a lot all right